Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shorts right here at the Rant and Share Smoking a Poor Excuse for a Lucky Strike after my shower. Sorting out the world's problems. One slow inhale to a time. And yes, it's noisy apartment noise day. There's garbage trucks and everybody else. And Quite frankly, my voice is hoarse from yelling. I've been in quite the vulgar mood today. And I figure there's no better time to talk about this particular subject. While I am not a financial expert by any means, nor am I a very intelligent man when it comes to money, I've learned some basic truths about money troubles. <sighs> See, the system's rigged. I, I hate to burst everybody's bubble about it, but there are the haves and the have-nots, and if you're listening to one fucking thing I have to say, chances are you ain't a have, okay? The reason why rich people have money is because the rest of us don't have money. And well, let me explain why. There's a reason why there is a liquor store or a pawn shop or a smoke shop or a head shop on every street corner in most urban areas. The same reason there's a payday loan place in every community. That is because most people fall into the trap of what's called instant gratification. <sighs> okay. See, here's the thing. There are two ways to get something, right? There's work hard, save your money, go without, make sacrifices, do it the right way, which is the way I generally try and do things. However, that doesn't always work. Sometimes life happens, okay? In my case, I have a fussy senior who can't get their shit together, and a fucking greedy cunt of a sister who thinks that I'm a human cash machine that does fucking chores. And so what happens is, is since I don't have access to the bank account, being as I'm not financial power of attorney, mom and the sister, they weigh mom's needs over everybody's needs, right? So... Mom gets to go and go out to eat and spend money and piss extra money away at the grocery store that isn't on my food card and shit like that. And then come the end of the month, we have a bill come up short. They threaten to turn off the power when she's got a CPAP machine. So whose fault is this, right? It's mine because I'm the man. So back to my point here. The reason why there is a pawn shop, a liquor store, um, a head shop, a smoke shop, and a payday loan cashing place in every community in the free world is the second reason, you know, or the second way, rather, to be financially abled, and that is have your fun today and get into debt tomorrow, which is where my mom gets into shit. You know, my dad and my mom, they just were so fucking fiscally irresponsible, man. I can't tell you all the nights of sleep I lost as a young man trying to save our old house and then later just dig ourselves out from under a fucking bad mortgage because they just didn't know any better. And these problems were made long before I was born. You know, they fall into that trap, well, I'm making good money now and I don't need to save anything, but I want to go on vacation and blah, blah, fucking blah, blah. You know, and my mom, right, she had a shopping addiction for years and years and years. The goddamn QVC catalog, the Lane Bryant, the fucking all the other bullshit. And we got into bankruptcy. I say we, it was them, of course. When my dad got sick, I inherited his fucking problems. Same for my mom. And life got hard, man, during the recession. And, uh, you know, I, I was digging us out pretty good, and then the FBI started following me around. I had to kind of take a year off because, like, I, I ain't trying to get hemmed up, you know? So I had to keep shit on the down low. That meant no more armed robberies, no more repossession jobs, no more getting the trunk motherfuckers, you know? No more selling pounds of this and that and the other thing, you know? And I've paid for my fucking sins, you know, more, more than most people ever fucking will. I, I've buried more friends and family than anybody at this point. I, I've lost like 40 people in three years, man. And that's not even including my old life. So, you know, you move along in time, right? You start digging yourself out real good, you know, and you're, you're doing real well, and you're building credit, and, you know, you're paying the bills, and you're getting the mouths fed. And, and then somebody gets sick, right? Well... 
there's a reason why that hospitals cost so much money. And even if you're just paying a dollar here and a dollar there, it still adds up. And that's to keep you a debt to the system. Because unless you can take care of yourself at home and perform major surgery on yourself, you pretty well you're going to need a hospital at some point in your life, right? Now, it's not when you're in chronic pain and you need actual opioids to fucking manage the pain so you don't drink yourself to that. Oh, no, no, we don't do things like that. No, no, no. But, but you know, like, they'll, they'll fucking, you know, put you on a ventilator, give you a, a shot that, you know, is probably poison. They'll, they'll do all kinds of evil shit to you. They'll abuse you over wearing a mask. They'll deny you your basic human rights. And then they'll charge you for the privilege. Regardless of if you have good insurance or not, you're still footing the bill out of pocket. Trust me. I know. I've seen it. And so, you know, like, let's say you're old person, man. You know, the breadwinner of the family. You know, they get on a feeding tube, right? Well, you know, there's two ways to handle it. You stuff them in a nursing home or you keep them at home where they're comfortable and safe because you promised, right? You know, and you do your job, right? You get ahead, and, you know, you start saving a little bit of money and shit, and then things go downhill, right? September of last year, you know, I was saving up to build a fucking race gun. And now, a year later, I'm like five plus grand, you know, out of pocket to my mother, uh, like nine of my firearms, and hopefully not counting, because I got three left, and I ain't getting rid of them for nothing. And basically, uh, everything I love and care about man, just to keep the fucking lights on and the bills paid for me and mom. And this is kind of the reason why I will never make another promise again as long as I live. Because I'm, I'm here to tell you, man, I, I made two promises in my life. Like, two real promises. Well, I've made more, but, but those are all fulfilled. The, the two promises that I made were I promised I would be there for my dad until he let go and he went home to the dark side of the moon. And I fulfilled my duty. And I promised him on his deathbed two things. That, that I would make the son of a bitch that, that fucked my Aunt Jean's dead body suffer. Which I have fulfilled my promise on that in several forms. And uh, I would be there for my mom until the bitter end regardless. And you know, my dad warned me there are lots of snakes in the grass. I'm sure you can see them rolling around in their hith hith. They're all plotting on me, right? Take my money. that, you know, when he died, you know, power fell to me as the man, because I'm like the last one left that's of any age to do anything about fucking anything. And he made me promise, you know, when I got clean years ago, you know, like, never do it again. And regardless of how bad things get, be there for your family and never go back to the way you used to be, man. I covered for you. I saved you from death row and everything else. You owe me. And I've held that promise. So, being poor is death by a thousand cuts, right? You have to weigh your risks versus your benefits. But you know, at the end of the night, as, as miserable as I feel, and even though I haven't slept in like eight fucking days, the last time I was awake this long, I smoked closet meth with my ex-girlfriend and got her pregnant just before I got clean, okay? I still have a clean conscience about what I've done because I did my job and I fulfilled my duty and I've done the right thing you know people have often asked me you know how do you live with the monsters inside your head after all that shit you did you know growing up to get by and, and the plain answer is, is you know everybody that ever crossed my path in that regard they all had a set of rules we agreed to when you sign on the dotted line so to say and at the end of the day, they broke the rules, and they paid the price for it. And there's only one price to pay for it. You know, and I'm not sorry about any of it, in that regard. You know, I mean, do I have some regrets in life? Yeah, kinda, but not really. I did the best I could with the tools I had. So what I'm really trying to say, man, is uh, don't pull a me. You know, don't don't sign on the dotted line unless you fucking mean it until the end. You know, 
as it sits right now, I'm facing homelessness here in a few months if things don't get sorted out money-wise, and quite frankly, I'm not in a mental state to deal with it today. I'm having an exceedingly rotten day. But I will get things sorted out. So, as always, don't fall into the trap of credit cards, payday loans, title loans, uh, pawn shops, whatever else. But if you do, man, life happens. You know, you can always dig your way out at some point until it, you know, becomes too deep and then they're throwing dirt over you. And until then, we'll probably get by. So, thank you all for your love and support, and I will be back at some point after I have something intelligent or entertaining to say.